Hello then, welcome to the Nutmeg on Guardian TV. My name is Solomon for where it's been a while and it's great to be back. Really, really good to be back. The show was not a hiatus, but now we're bigger and we are better. I hope you're keeping safe wherever you are. You're following all COVID-19 protocols, wearing your masks and social distancing. Yes, a whole lot has happened in the world of football this week. Uh, we saw Real Madrid actually crash out of the Copa de Reds with third Tier Spanish side Al Cayano uh, in that particular one, and also we saw Manchester United top of the pile in the English Premier League. Interesting times. Uh, Liverpool can't catch a break, they lost actually yesterday to Burnley, one goal to nil. Um, courtesy of Ashley Ben's penalty in that one. So, so much for us to talk about today on the show. Stick with me and make sure you enjoy your time on the show today. But first, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're not subscribed already, and make sure you turn on the notifications so that we can deliver awesome content directly into your inbox. Joining me on the show today, virtually from his base is Rotimi Daramola is a contributor for gold.com and is going to be sharing his expertise analysis and thoughts with us on certain things that we're going to be talking about on the show today first we're going to be starting from Liverpool yes yes Liverpool they are probably a side you say in crisis currently and and Rotimi it's great to have you join us on the show today um it's first it's good to be on the platform to talk football one of the things I love doing the most. All right, thank you for joining us, Rotimi. So Liverpool, they've not won in their past five games. They've not scored in four games. And we saw that they lost for the first time in four years, actually, to Burnley at the Anfield. You know, a whole lot of people would hear that Liverpool are probably in a crisis mode right now. They are six points behind Manchester United, who are top of the league. And even um, uh, Jurgen Klopp came out to say that, oh, um, any talk about you know, a title defence is actually silly right now. But wh what do you think is actually wrong with this Liverpool side? Um, I think for Liverpool, you have to consider that um, nothing just happens, uh, especially in football. It's either it's been long coming and nobody um, catches um, the trend or... Um, it's just been like a series of three or four games behind um, and then all of a sudden, boom, it happens. You remember, we've not been able to pick wins easily as we used to. Their easiest win was that seven-year win over Crystal Palace, if you remember. And um, since then, it just went like, okay, kill, and then finally a gradual drop. The game against Aston Villa was a game against a young, a very, very young side. And they even struggled to get the goals, if you remember. The Aston Villa squad, the Aston Villa squad, the first goal of that game, I, I stand to be corrected. And from there, it seemed like I said Liverpool was going to get thrown out. And then they came back again and they scored four goals. Having scored five goals in their last six games in our competition, I think you can understand the issue. The front three, if you watch them, they don't seem like that dreaded trio again. There's no connection. Um, against Manchester United in the Premier League, Manu was playing his side of the pitch. Fabio was playing what he could have um, Fabio is not a natural midfield defender. He's a midfielder. Henderson is not a natural defender. He's a midfielder. So if you play with that kind of makeshift defense for so long, then you're going to have troubles. There's going to be trouble in La La Land, not to talk of Anfield Land. So it's suspect uh, when it comes to the likes of Van Dijk, um, Joe Gomez is out, Matip is out, it's not playing. So you can understand that if they are considering the goals right now, it is only down to what is going on at the back. And it's also down to the fact that dreaded Wells Mane, Alfamino, and Salah they step onto the pitch, you know that they're going to get goals. But when sides look start looking at the record and say, hey, this Liverpool side is struggling, that means one thing. They are not much of a threat to us as we are to them. So let's just go for the kill. And that's what the likes of Burnley uh, um, did. Manchester United didn't succeed with that in the Premier League. But you suspect that in their FA Cup match this weekend, they are going to have one because the usual suspect, the real ones, the, the trained defenders are not playing. We are having a makeshift defense, and that is more trouble, more than enough for your club to handle. Oh, quite interesting. Now, the, the, the way you put it, you put it quite perfectly. You know, you know, talking about the fact that you know um, they're making use of makeshift defenders. You know, Fabinho filling in for Van Dijk, who's currently injured. You know, Joe Gomez, who's also not available for that particular side. But but it, it takes me to this question. You know, um, with regards their depth 
and you know the quality of, of people that come off the bench. Uh, but before I get into that, you know, someone as instrumental as you know Diogo Jota, who has been injured and who was brought in, you know, probably to be a challenge to the first unit. Do you do you think that his injury has actually quite affected Liverpool this time? And also, you're looking at the second unit itself. We saw in that particular game against Burnley, we saw Alex Oxley Chamberlain, Divock Origi in that particular fixture. But you, you have this sense that they are not up to scratch when it comes to, you know, challenging, you know, the, the first unit that's Mane, Firmino, and Salah for those, you know, that best and the starting best in, in Liverpool side. What, what do you think that really tends to or plays at, you know, with regards to this Liverpool side and the slump that they're currently on? Uh, when Jota came in and um, he started scoring a lot, that automatically upset the existing protocol. And when you do that, there's a whole lot that happens psychologically and emotionally. The players begin to feel, okay, is my place being threatened? The likes of Roberto Firmino. And then Jota goes on, and then you have to start picking players from um, that emotional pit and saying, okay, you know what? Jota is out. You have to come and replace him. And then the player keeps wondering, but this player came in and then he did so well, um, having me at the back seat for a while. Now he's out and I have to pick up the responsibility from where I stopped. So he's not going to probably hit pick point because of what happened when Jota was playing. So that's the issue that Liverpool is having right now. The fact that Jota came, he created a, a uh, how do I put it now? He created a, a, a balance to an extent. And it was like, oh, Jota, there's Jota that he was getting playing time. Getting playing time at the expense of some other players. And then they've already decided, okay, this is the balance. We are building on Jota. And then Jota leads. Regardless of the depth, we are still going to stutter. And if you look at Liverpool going up front, you can't talk about them. It's not like Manchester City where if a Gabriel Jesus doesn't play, um, Kuna Aguero will play. If Kuna Aguero doesn't play, Pep Guardiola can play without. With a false nine, you look at Liverpool that can step up to the plate and do equally or even do more than that trio will do. So one of them goes out, the balance is out. If three of them are not in their form, then Liverpool is in big trouble because you want to call them Rigi. We saw the one-on-one -on -one chance that he missed against um, Burnley yesterday. So for Liverpool, it's, 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 it's a classic case of not having guests in Europe. If you look at how to have in Europe, I can guess in Europe. If a Benji has a stone stone play today, they can have Laporte and Ake play in that position. If Kai Walker doesn't play, Cancelo can play. If Zinchenko doesn't play on the left, Ben and Benjamin Mackey can play there. Even Cancelo can play there. So you have this, they can tweak things the way they want. For Jurgen Klopp, I don't think he has that luxury. And that is another major headache that he's having this season. The major guys, the big guys in Liverpool, they are proud, there are no replacement for them. And that is a very, very big headache for Yogi Club, or has been a big headache for him so far this season. Interesting thoughts there. Thank you so much. But but let's 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 shift gears now and move to you know the, the team on top of the Premier League, that's Manchester United and what they've been doing right. You know, my, my, my question, you know, is can Manchester United actually win the Premier League? You know, this is the first time since the 2012, you know, 2013 season that they are top of the league at this sort of period. Um, you know, it's, it's been a really phenomenal work that Ole has done so far. And there are many skeptics to the fact that, oh, they might not be able to sustain it and all of that. But, but what do you think? Do you think they'll be able to actually win the Premier League? It's 19 games in and they're six points ahead of Liverpool. And maybe um, Manchester City have the game in hand, yeah, but still, they're yeah, top of the bar. What do you think? Can they finish top of the Premier League? The, the beauty of momentum is... Once it happens, once it starts, it's difficult to stop. Once it starts, it's difficult to fight against. And that's what Manchester United are enjoying right now. I think it's the momentum that will take them past Liverpool in the Cup, barring all unforeseen circumstances and ethical drama and magic. But I think for Manchester United right now, they are in the time of their lives. And they will be looking to catch or touch. Oliver Solskjaer will be looking to touch that evasive trophy. His team has tried as much as possible to be eliminated in cup games and cup competitions. So they will be looking to push this one. But you look at you look across town and you see Manchester City and you begin to wonder, Manchester United, Manchester City, can they go toe to toe with Manchester City? For squad depth, maybe not. For um, creating chances, maybe not. For experience, maybe not. So Manchester United, will they win the Premier League? They will win the Premier League, I dare say, if Manchester City doesn't win the Premier League. Oh, quite interesting. You know, Ole has done some things really well. And, and my, my final question to you would be that um, 
What do you think Ole has done right? What has it done right? You know, we remember when Ole came into this side, it was about steadying the ship, they made some form of progress. Uh, but at some point, some people were calling for a sack. And now he's top of the Premier League. Part. What has he actually gotten right? And, and a follow-up question to that will be, you know, with the pieces that he has had, you know, Pogba has been quite instrumental lately. How much of an influence do you think that that has really, really had or will have on this side, you know, when it comes to the stretch, you know, for them to, you know, challenge, really challenge for the Premier League down the stretch? I think first, what I've really done, he has built his side around the base. He has discovered the base. And what's that base? The Portuguese midfielder, Bruno Fernandes. He has understood that when Fernandes takes, the rest of the side take one way or the other. They just they, the rest of the side just connect. This one clicks. They assist. The chances are created. The assist are made, and of course the players are in the right place at the right time. However, that's just one of the things that is getting. One of the other things he's not getting right, in my perspective, is continually playing Anthony Martial despite all the shortcomings that the French striker has had. So getting it right, he has built his base around. Um, um, Bruno Fernandes, and he has ensured that to an extent he has discovered the talent, the real talent that Eric Bay is, and gradually he is putting him up and ensuring that he is getting those games and he is working things out perfectly. So I think Bruno Fernandes for me, Eric Bay, and then Pogba. I can't say Socha has discovered Pogba. I just say Pogba has has dug in deep to discover himself. I mean, when you start getting the goals, and especially when a player wants to respond to critics, they seem to find that inner depth in them, inner wisdom, inner strength to go all the way. I think that's what Pogba is doing. After all the drama from his um, agent, he has dug in deep. He has rediscovered a certain portion of the real Pogba, and then he's getting goals. He's contributing immensely to the side. So what, what, what has worked for all the time? going to social Bruno Fernandes, Eric Bailly, and ensuring that they are not shipping in as much goals as they get up front. For Pogba, I think he's just trying to partly rediscover himself, partly make a response to the critics who have questioned his loyalty to the Red Devils. Oh, quite interesting thoughts there by Rosemary Daramala. Thank you so, so much for talking to us on the Nutmeg today. Uh, we hope to have you once again another time. It's good to be here. It's good to be here to talk to you as always. All right, have a great weekend. Interesting thoughts there by Rotimi Damarmola, you know, breaking things down with regards Liverpool and Manchester United. Wow, just make sure you stick around on the Nutmeg every Monday and Friday so that you get fresh analysis like this from top experts around the world. Thank you so much for sticking with me. It's been an absolute pleasure presenting this to you. If you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you are already and turn on the notification so that you get fresh content like this directly into your inbox. Thank you so much for watching once again. My name is Solomon Fowe and this has been The Nutmeg.